Hey, welcome back to another episode of Media Talks TV with your host, Tony J. I just wanted to make a another video, but this is going to be a, a video that's going to be separate from what I'm currently doing. Now, as you know, on my channel, I had two previous videos that I put up way back in September. And those two videos, those will actually be going on private. I always like to let my subscribers know when certain videos are going on private for specific reasons. I will be planning on taking those two videos down. And the specific videos that I'm uh, talking about are the ones pertaining to Dominican Republic. I plan on taking those videos down and putting them on a separate channel later down the line. So if you don't see those two videos there, they're gone. Now, as I jump into this topic, I'm going to put out a disclaimer. This topic that I'm going to talk about pertains to the whole passport bro movement and i thought i'd do a video about that because i'm seeing a lot of content out on youtube that is very troubling and i think you know voicing my opinion on this is important because i was once a follower of that movement i have decided really to disassociate myself with that name for various reasons. Now, I'm not going to say the particular name of the person because I don't want the vitriol to come back on me because there's a lot of vitriol that has come back on me from previous interviews I've did with other YouTubers about my experiences and my trips to the Dominican Republic. And I've decided from the previous interviews and the previous videos that I've done to really stay quiet on the issue of the Passport Bro movement. But I feel like there has to be a discussion had and there has to be some type of nuance conversation to this, what we call supposed movement, even though I don't really consider it a movement. But in hindsight of what the, the videos that I've been seeing from this particular guy, you know his name. You know what he's done. He's the head of that movement. Um, and I've, de I've kind of decided to really put voice my particular opinion on the movement itself and where it needs to go and where the energy needs to be redirected because we're often seeing a lot of videos coming out of Dominican Republic coming out of Colombia uh, there's a few channels that I follow, but I'm not religiously watching their content all the time because there's so much content out there that YouTube is really flooded with travel content. And because it's flooded with travel content, it's actually put a crosshairs on the movement itself and countries are responding vigorously that being said let me go ahead and jump into the topic i started looking at passport bro content i would say 2021 this was really a year after the pandemic and that's what prompted 
my initial trip to the Dominican Republic to see what things were all about. Now, I'm not going to say I had a bad trip down in Dominican Republic. I'm not going to say that Dominican Republic is a bad place because I've only been to one section of Dominican Republic. But often when it comes to seeking out information to travel to Dominican Republic, what I find with the Passport Bro movement is that they don't offer any accurate information. They'll tell you certain things, but they won't tell you everything about the island. When I started asking people, asking around, looking for people that actually have boots on the ground intel, I kind of got this smart-ass response. And many of the groups that I've been in, not just one particular group, but many groups, some of the guys act very catty. When you ask them a question about where to go, where to eat, uh, how to save money. They'll say, you know, I've gotten responses like, oh, nigga learn through trial and error. I don't know whose man is this. Yo, get your boy. I've had those types of responses from those supposed people in the movement itself. Now, I'm not saying every man or every person in this group or, or particular groups have uh, deterred me the wrong way. I've gotten help along the way. And, uh, you know, I've actually understood that from my first trip to the Dominican Republic, I needed to move differently. You know, first time getting on a plane, I'm from, I'm, you know, I'm from Baltimore. So, you know, you know how Baltimore is. Everybody knows how Baltimore is. Getting on a plane that first time to go to another country, that was an adventure in of itself. That was a journey in of itself because most of the time, most Baltimore niggas don't really get out of Baltimore. We stay in the same fucking place. But I was able to dig up information regarding flights and certain things and I made my way to Fort Lauderdale. Now, once I got to Dominican Republic, I knew in certain ways I had to be smart and I had to do things a certain way. But one of my biggest mistakes that I regret when I went down to DR was getting a tour guide. And getting a tour guide was probably... I would say, you know, it leaves you open to scams. And a lot of times I felt like when I first went out of the country, I needed some type of guidance that, so that I could get a feel of the, the island. But what I didn't realize is that when I came down there, you know, of all the videos that I was watching on YouTube and getting back into the central discussion, of all the videos that I watched on YouTube, they don't give you a very concrete idea or a very big lay of the land because one, Dominican Republic doesn't have that much internet or their internet is very spotty. It's not up to American standards. So when you see certain videos, they're going to be spotty or they're going to be blurry. They won't tell you directions or they won't tell you certain things that you need to know. And 
to be honest, there's not a lot of information out there on Sosua. But I do, in hindsight, later down the line, plan to change all that. And this is what the problem is with the Passport Bro movement. This is one point. Is that they don't offer informational content. And uploading videos on YouTube and uploading videos across the internet, most of it focuses on women. And that's the biggest problem with the movement. And that's why in certain ways, there's a target on a lot of these guys' backs that go to these countries now. Because now you're starting to see Colombia speaking out against a uh, passport bro movement. And on top of that, you're seeing the issue with Colombia get even worse with this whole gringo go home bullshit. And a lot of these content creators are not speaking precisely to what the problem is. And the problem that the Passport Bro movement needs to fix, if it wants to continue having the longevity that it should have, is they got to stop doing videos on promoting the women. And that's one of the angles that this movement is this promotion of prostitution and sex tourism, even though it's legal in the country. The problem with promoting that is that there are laws on the books that specifically state, especially in Colombia and in the Dominican Republic, promotion of sex tourism and promotion of pimping and prostitution is illegal. So when these guys do these videos, understand you're breaking the law, but you're breaking a law that is not necessarily being implemented. It's tolerated to a certain point, but the promotion of it is what's problematic. And a lot of countries, Colombia especially, is cracking down on this type of exploitation. That's why you're seeing all this stuff about gringo go home, all these signs posted from, from what I've heard. There's a vitriol in Colombia, and I even wouldn't even suggest anybody to go to Colombia at this point because of the issue of Colombia being a narco terrorist state and a narco, really a, what they call it, a narco state. A lot of their politics and geopolitical interests is entrenched in drug trafficking. So whatever you get involved in and in Colombia if they feel as though you're cutting into their interests, they're going to say something about it. And that's one of the biggest issues right now that, that a lot of these content creators don't understand. You know Colombia is a narco-terrorist state. It's a narco-state. And what I mean by, you look up the word narco-state and what it means. A narco-state is essentially... A situation where drugs and drug trafficking runs the local economy and runs local politics. It's entrenched in the country's politics. That's why you have issues with Colombians having civil unrest. The same thing goes with Mexico. Mexico is a narco state. The two dangerous countries but people still go to them. I'm not saying it's all bad, but you definitely you definitely don't want to get caught slipping. And with a lot of these content creators, they promote 
the sunny side, but they don't talk about that there's a few bad apples and a few things that's problematic with the country. You know, if you could just provide some solid information and some solid content that focuses on who's traveling to DR, who's traveling to Columbia, then I could I could actually consider being on board with it. But the problem with the passport bro movement is that there are too many content creators pre-camming or secretly recording women on the street. And then when people see those thumbnails and then they type in Columbia because 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 uh, YouTube's algorithm picks up on a lot of things. So somebody types in Columbia or Cartagena or Sosua or DR Sosua or DR Santo Domingo. There's going to be videos and video after video after video of women. Women scantily clad, dressed scantily clad. And those videos really are making the country look bad. And you're seeing a lot of the locals getting pissed off at tourists because of what they're seeing on YouTube. Now imagine from the other point of view if somebody did that in your country and it's your country and you're struggling and you're seeing people from other countries come to your country and do despicable things that they find, well, they find despicable. I'm not going to say what you do is despicable or the other person despicable, but at the same time, put yourself in a local's shoes, how you think that makes them feel. You know, the last thing they want to see is people that don't look like them coming into their country trying to destroy the sanctity of their country. Like Colombia, to a certain extent, is, is and especially Dominican Republic, they're both conservative countries. And because they're conservative countries, there's certain things that they will tolerate to a point. Once they tolerate it, then there's no way at some point they're going to clamp down on it and they're going to say enough is enough. And then they have laws on the books that they don't enforce outright, but the law is there just in case it gets out of control. That's how the law works in most of these countries. They'll tolerate. They're not moralistic. They're not as moralistic as the United States is in policing prostitution or policing uh, anything that pertains with sex, basically. They're permissive societies. So, but, but you have to be very careful, learn the local laws, or you may find yourself in a situation where you won't be coming back to the States. Now, now that I got that point, point across, I'll jump into the issue of the reasons why people are traveling to these countries. Me personally, I wanted to travel to the Dominican Republic because I wanted to experience the culture and the women too. But the women weren't mostly on my mind. It was the culture, the food, the people, bachata music, everything else that I learned about the culture, learn how to engage with Spanish culture. And to be honest, I had a beautiful time in Dominican Republic. I enjoyed every minute of it. But what I realized when I got back to the States I had to sharpen my Spanish game. I had to become a better Spanish speaker. And I also had to become a better um, 
better at dancing to bachata music because bachata music is a part of the culture there in DR. Everywhere you go, they're playing bachata music. You can't get away from it. That's another beauty about Dominican Republic is that when you go there, merengue and bachata, and to a certain extent, bolero, is a part of the musical tapestry of that island. But you don't see that being talked about with these content creators who call themselves the Passport Bros. <clears throat> None of them know a lick of dancing to bachata music. None of them really honestly speak the language of bachata. And once you, once you know how to dance to bachata music, once you know how to speak Spanish fluently, because Dominican Spanish is like, faster and choppy um you'll feel like a local but most people most of the passport bros some of them don't really want to put in that work to try and master a language i have been speaking beginner spanish in high school so i'm very well versed in it my hope is to try and get better at it and also maybe hopefully try to learn Portuguese, uh, Brazilian Portuguese, hopefully. But the problem that I find is there's no emphasis on the culture of DR. And there's a lot of guys that go to one part of the island but don't focus on anything else other than the girls. The girls are just the icing on a cake. But what it should be what the movement and travel specifically should be about is basically a reset. And what I mean by a reset, it should be about getting your mental health in order, getting gaining another perspective outside of yourself, being able to see different parts of the island by yourself and seeing and interacting with another culture, engaging, eating the food, being able to speak somewhat of the language. That's what it should be about. You miss a whole lot when your emphasis is just on women. And I started to realize that even when I came back from DR. I didn't just want it to always be about women. And I looked up two specific videos from this I, I'm not I'm not gonna mention his name, but he he knows who he is. He's 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 a younger, younger guy, probably 24, 25 years old. But um I looked at his videos and he talked about, you know, women are women everywhere, you know, women are the same everywhere. Now he's kind of like switching up his uh switching up this whole thing, like he'd been in Africa. Uh, for a couple of years and then he's coming back to Dallas and now he's saying he's saying women are women everywhere and I'm like you got you had one one bad experience with a woman overseas shouldn't make you group every other woman into one category and what I notice a lot with the, the, the passport bros is this need to always group women into one specific space like oh they're westernized oh or uh uh women are women everywhere you go women got added uh brazilian women got attitudes at dominican women got attitudes oh all dominican women one is your money da, da, da. and and i hear all these videos and then you get the the so sewer videos and then they they like oh one minute so sewer's popping next minute you get other videos talking about, oh, so Sue is dead. Don't go there. It's dead. They done shut down Roombas and they done shut down this part. They done shut down the whole block. They done shut down Pedro Clasante and shit. And I'm like, every time something bad happens and every time something either ha bad happens in DR, Cartagena or Medellin, they say, oh, don't go there. Oh, uh, so Sue is dead. They they make all these stupid shit like Sosu is dead. I'm like, Sosu is one beach town, one small little beach town. 
out over the whole island. So you're saying, so you're telling me I should stop going to the DR because, because of one little beach town that, that got shut down? I'm not going to stop doing it. That's stupid. You got to have enough money to go back and forth there. And even I realize that. And that's why, that's why I'm not as adamant in trying to go back to the DR just yet until I get my situation in the States in order so that I could be able to be ready to go back to DR. But these videos, these contradicting videos, they're putting out contradicting content and then saying that the place that you're going to is dead or don't no longer go, that's problematic to me because, like I said, you're making it about the women. And the problem with that is that women change up. Now, is there some women out there like you? If you don't understand the culture, if you don't understand the people, yeah, you're going to get certain responses. People going to look at you stupid. And a lot of these guys that come to come to these certain places, they make themselves look like idiots in a certain. And, and to be honest, because they don't emphasize focusing on the culture and then on top of that it's the hidden vitriol they have towards african-american women at home which is problematic you know whether you believe it or not you have to be able to vet women anywhere you go but if you don't understand the culture if you don't understand the people that you're interacting with, you're not going to have a good time. It's as simple as that. And if you don't have an awareness about yourself that scams can happen, that's when you're going to have problems. And when you say shit like, because I, I had I seen in one video, he said, you know, oh, uh, Brazilian women are becoming westernized. What the fuck does that mean? Brazil is in the West. If you're talking about Western, the Western Hemisphere, you're talking about the continent of the Americas. There's Canada, there's United States, then there's Mexico, Central, and South America. There's continent, there's countries within that continent. Every culture is going to be westernized because you have social media in fact social media is one of the primary reasons why we're traveling to these countries now because before social media we didn't know shit about brazil we didn't do we didn't know shit about dominican republic we didn't know nothing about these countries but then when the video started popping up when jamel sheriff started popping up uh, Cuba Dave and all these other guys, uh, Charles Tyler, all that shit. Then the content started exploding after, I would say, 2017. I mean, don't act like you didn't want to go down. Don't act like y'all didn't want to go down to Colombia after y'all saw Narcos. Because wasn't nobody really fucking with Colombia like that. Nobody wasn't really fucking with Colombia until they saw Narcos. Then everybody wanted to go to Medellin to learn about Pablo Escobar. Everybody wanted to go to Cali to learn about the Cali cartel. People wanted to go to Cartagena, which was the first country because of the CIA, the uh, Secret Service scandal that happened in Colombia when Obama visited uh, Cartagena. Then Cartagena became the first, the first part of the city in Colombia that became known worldwide for prostitution after that scandal. So, I mean, you're not really fooling anybody as the reason why you're traveling down there. This information 
that comes up, it drew people to Colombia. Now Colombia is like, well, we're we're being we're attracting tourism for the wrong reasons. There's certain people that's coming here looking to exploit women. And I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm not going to disagree that that sex trafficking goes on down in Colombia and parts of DR. That has been in existence, but that was well in existence way before the passport row movement. But when it's being highlighted by black men, now it's oh, we're, we're sex traffickers and we're pimps and we're doing this and we're doing that. And now it's put a target on our backs because of the actions of a select few who are creating content to promote and engage in this type of activity. And remember, these types of activities are clandestine activities, meaning that you don't hear white travelers come, you know, promoting prostitution in places like Costa Rica and all these other places because they're supposed to be places of getaways. They're quiet about their shit. We know that it exists and it's legal down there, just like gambling is legal down there. But at the same time, it is a clandestine experience, meaning it happens in secrecy. That means you're not supposed to talk about it. You're not supposed to, to be gloating about it, bragging about it, putting up signs, talking about all the hoses right here. And you see a lot of those guys and black content creators, they're promoting hoism. Oh, the hose is right here. Oh, the hose is at that hotel. Oh, you got to go to the Oz Hotel on Corner and Carter. And, 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 and you're seeing all this shit on social media. And now the countries are reacting, saying, oh, these are the guys that's coming here promoting passport bros. And, and now. The women are getting in and saying, we don't want them then. And they're saying shit like this because they know the difference. They know the type of people that's coming in. The fitted caps, the jewelry, the, the jersey, the fucking jerseys. And y'all walking around in shorts, jerseys, and flip-flops and shit with a whole bunch of jewelry on. Gold watches, fitted caps. And I know most of y'all come from New York because only New York niggas do that shit. New York and Atlanta. And you're giving us a bad stereotype because now they're looking at your content and saying, we don't want you here. You don't know how to dress. You don't know how to act. And then it puts a bullseye on your back. So when you come out, when you come out the airport, they know who you are. They know why you came here. And that's the bad thing. White guys, they don't get that because they don't brag about their experiences like that. You know. And I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and give a, a whole diatribe about this shit, but you know, things need to fundamentally change. If you want to travel, I'm a, I'm cool with that, but it can't always be about the women, is what I'm trying to tell the, the movement itself. And you want to distance yourself away from that that PB uh passport broism shit. You want to distance yourself and disassociate yourself with that shit immediately because it brings bad connotations. There's one primary reason why. Once I go back to traveling again, I'll be starting a business focused on tourism in a sense that focusing on the culture, but making it for men and making it for men only tourism and promoting that and the positive aspects of these countries instead of just focusing on the women. You could focus on the aspects of the women, but 
just don't focus on focus on you know horrorism because that's in debauchery and that's one of the things I had a problem with when it came to Sosu is a lot of this stuff like the debauchery running down three four women a day and all that shit like it it, it gets tiring after a certain point I can't keep up with the shit because I'm getting older but the drinking the, the smoking and all that other shit that come along with that lifestyle, I'm not engaging in that shit. I just want to be able to enjoy my vacation, sit on the beach, meditate, write in my journal. You know, that's one primary reason why I like traveling to, I would love to travel again to the Dominican Republic or to Colombia. Or Costa Rica, either one of those things. But the content has to change. And I'll be removing, like I said, I'll be removing those two videos because I feel like I myself got sucked into this whole movement that really hasn't materialized into anything. And what I'm saying is that if you want to materialize a movement into something solid, Start a business around it and focus on promoting and building that business so that way we could circulate the dollars amongst ourselves. We could own real estate in these other countries and also be able to live a lower standard of living than what we, what we live in the United States. And also, there needs to be an emphasis on on explaining how how are you able to go back and forth between there and DR. I know most of the guys that do these content creations, some of them are truck drivers, some of them are IT. Majority of them are military expats. So they get their money off of their disability, off the rip. But there needs to be an understanding of building that content around how do I get to travel to this country and have an income? How do I go to buy real estate within that country? What are the banking services like? What? How do I get my money transferred from the states over to that said country? Those need to be the topics that need to be discussed in these circles but I don't see it being discussed in those circles I don't hear about real estate options and real estate opportunity learning to actually build something worth a damn so that it can have longevity into the future all this shit about focusing on women and focusing on zeroing in on asses on Pedro Clasante asses walking walking asses on uh Sosua beach and shit like that that shit has to stop because it's not just about the women man of people it's about the culture it's about experiencing something different than what you're accustomed to in your own country gaining a perspective a lot of people don't want to go to Punta Cana because it's too touristy. But there's a lot of nice, you know, five-star resorts you can go to. You know, how to drive in Dominican Republic. You don't see any content being promoted by passport bros in those fucking in those fucking countries. You don't you don't see how you can get around, how you could move. And then when y'all when y'all shoot videos, which is another problem, when y'all shoot videos off your phones like this, y'all have the shit pointed to the ground. Y'all never have sh the shit up, but when y'all y'all record, whenever it comes up on a big screen TV, all you see is the bars. You're supposed to be shooting this way. You're supposed to be shooting like this. Not like this, like this. A lot of motherfuckers, y'all don't know how to do proper videos. You're shooting at the ground. All I'm seeing is fucking ground the whole time and fucking sand. You're going to create content. 
learn how to fucking shoot a video. Most of y'all don't know how to shoot video to save your fucking self. Y'all just upload content just to ride the algorithm and then get the money and then go to the next next thing. And that's what YouTube has created. But even now, YouTube has been clamping down, clapping channels just like that because it's not community safe. You're going to have to need to learn how to redistribute your content and not just depend on YouTube revenue. And that's one of my biggest problems with, with this whole movement. They just clapped down uh, one Tom Young Luchon, which is one of the, the channels that I used to watch. He does Philippines content. Uh, Men Tuition. Never, never channel gone. Had to rebuild this subscriber base. A lot of people don't know right now. A lot of DR channels and Columbia channels are on the fringes of getting taken off of YouTube. And it's time for y'all guys to really change up y'all content. Mix it up a little bit. Don't just focus on fucking women all the time and photo recording the asses on Sosua Beach. Like, that's the only fucking thing out there. Go to some bars, go to some 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 nightclubs or whatever. You know? Go to some beaches that nobody has never heard of. Go to the countryside. You bet you won't do that shit. Because the locals wouldn't, wouldn't allow it. That's my rant, man. I ain't trying to be up here all day, try to preach to you, lecture you. But to the to the particular guy that's the head of this movement. And you you know who I'm talking about, because like I said, you you know, the motherfuckers from Dallas. But he needs to be consistent with what he says because I've seen I've seen the last of his videos, and I've seen what he I've seen what he put he puts up, and now he's changing it up. And I'm like, you should have built the business around that a long time ago if you knew you were going to do this. Problem is nobody is writing any ebooks. Y'all could easily write some ebooks. Y'all could easily write some um, pamphlets, informational uh, PDFs, and actually talk about and discuss some of these countries that these guys want to travel to and how to prepare for their travels to that, to that said country. Because I know I had a lot of struggles trying to get, get things situated on the ground. And I didn't think about it. My vacation could have been a lot worse if I wasn't able to get my money out of my bank. That would have been bad. That would have been real bad. But I was able to get it out even though my car got locked. But that's the things that I'm talking about. We need to be able to school younger people that want to travel, want to be in this travel space to actually give them the intel and what they need in order to get to ex have a good experience on their first trip. And that's one of the reasons why I'm thinking about maybe building a business around this. It's not going to be instant. It's going to take a while before I build it up, but hopefully once it happens, maybe the narrative behind Passport Bro movement might change. But what I'm giving as a warning to the fellow content creators, especially the C3 content creators, you know who, if you're a C3 content creator, 
You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking to. If you want to have the longevity to continue in the movement that you built, build it around something that's got a foundation that's going to be fucking solid. YouTube is not a solid foundation. You have to scale it up and build it out for it to be something of value. And that shit takes years to do. But if you have a strategy and you have an idea, then you can scale it out. You got to learn how to scale the shit out. Or else it ain't going to go nowhere. It's going to be a funky YouTube channel that only lasts for like four fucking years before it gets clapped off. And that's exactly what's happening with YouTube right now. The algorithm is changing yet at the end. It's shifting. And it's about to shift away from that content. This has been another Media Talks TV. I'm your host, Tony J. I'm out.